Alright everyone, what is going on? Welcome back to another video and welcome back to my very first reaction to Pat McAfee. I'm coming to you as a rugby player with 20 years experience. I was born in New Zealand. I live in Australia. Uh, Pat McAfee, legendary kicker for the Colts, um, legendary for doing things slightly differently than normal. I, I actually don't know. People thought he was always quite humorous throughout his career and so now he's got his own talk show. Um, this video was a suggested video that came up after the last one when I watched Lamar Jackson's highlights in the Rams game where they smashed them. He got five passing touchdowns and about 95 rushing yards which is amazing. So anyways, in this video we're going to hear what Pat McAfee has to say about the MVP talent that is Lamar Jackson. Let's go. Jackson is an absolute freak show. Not only did they beat the hell out of the Patriots a couple weeks ago, not only did they just dismantle the Houston Texans, but they smashed now, the Rams on Monday Night Football in Los Angeles, California. Lamar Jackson, who was only a three and a half point favorite against the Los Angeles Rams, almost wins by 40. RG3 got some time in the fourth quarter. It's always good to see triple sticks out there throwing the ball around. Oh, yeah. That guy moves the needle. Baltimore knows. <laughs> triple sticks. A lot of people sticks. turn that game off at halftime, and you can't blame them. Lamar Jackson is making this sport look like child's play. Not only is he faster than every human and pulls away from other humans, but he has this ability to dissect the defense that not a lot of people are giving him credit for. Because he's a guy who I think puts in the work behind the scenes in the, in the film room, which is tough to do, by the way, whenever you're Lamar Jackson. Think about this. Michael Vick admitted that he had this problem. Think about this. Your entire life, it doesn't matter what sport it is, football, let's say they're playing tag, hell, kick the can. Lamar Jackson has been the best athlete on every field he has ever stepped on his entire life. He walks into a sport he's ever seen. What are we playing here? Cricket? Bang! Best cricket player <laughs> on the field as soon as he walks on there. So you would think whenever... That is a very interesting uh, sport that he just chose, being cricket. Um, for the fact that the states don't play cricket. And, uh, well, cricket is our version of your baseball. So thanks, mate. Thanks for that reference. You have some success, which he had at Louisville, and he continued to grow. And you would think when you have some success at Baltimore, although he didn't have the, uh, the amount of success I'm sure he wanted, they showed the highlight of him getting clobbered against the Chargers last year at the end of the season. But to think that this guy has had the amount of success that he has had at all levels, and he is still putting in the work in the film room, which is very obvious, by the way. You got a lot of very smart players playing for that Los Angeles Rams defense. Eric Weddle is one of the smartest safeties to ever play the game, and he's making him move with his eyes. He's making things happen and delivering the ball into spots that it has to be. So not only is he the most athletic guy, he seems to be the hardest working guy. He's one of the smartest guys, and he's a guy that can throw the hell out of the ball. What a recipe for your MVP. 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 I'm all the way on the hype train at this point. Bro, who the hell were all those other people? <laughs> who was that? recipe for your MVP. 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 Okay, so that's a reflection of Pat's desk in the background. They're in a room that's painted blue. They've got a white desk and a red desk. And we've got two random guys in the back here. And we're all wearing hats inside with fucking headphones on. So you know what? I don't feel so bad now. Fuck that. <laughs> we all love our caps, don't we? MVP. <laughs> I'm all the way on the hype train at this point. I don't know how you can't be. I don't know how you can't watch that guy play football and say, hey, that guy makes football better. That guy has taken a football that has changed its offensive strategy over the past few years. From the RPO to the wide open offense spread, throw the ball, let's change the rules so fantasy football numbers can go up. Instead, that Ravens team's gone the complete opposite direction. We need bigger bodies in here, and we are still going to make it the most exciting must-see offense that's available because we have a guy who's an anomaly, a unicorn, a one-of-one. One. They broke the mold when they created him. Let's see other teams try and do this and duplicate it. They won't be able to do it. Lamar Jackson offense. Now, that defense... What about it, Pat? ...is obviously getting overshadowed at this point. 
Hold the Houston Texans to zero. Continue Tom Brady and the Patriots offense woes, and then last night made a guy who got paid a lot. Okay, are some of you guys seeing this right down here? He's got some Oakleys on. He looks like the Terminator. He actually looks like a fucking beast. With that neck, it looks as if he's either Mike Tyson or a 300 pound bodybuilder, but he's not. He runs a 4.39 or something like that, 40 yard dash. In fact, I've got to check out his combine highlights. A lot of money looked very, very below average. That Los Angeles Rams offense with kid genius Sean McVay running the thing looked very average, and I don't think it's their fault. I just think that that Ravens defense obviously knows what it has on the offensive side of the ball, and they decide we're going to be dominant as well. I'll have an entire ranking of the NFL teams here in just a few moments after we play some Chase Rice, but I have a feeling that this Baltimore Ravens team might be one of them trains that lose the brakes, and in those videos you see they just clobber and slaughter everything that gets in its way. I, th I said that last night they might win by 40, and they won by 39. It's a whole day. It looks like that's a good call, Pat. For them. It's fun to watch, and the NFL is lucky to have it. It's 10.05 here in Indianapolis, Indiana. We have Tony Dungy joining us in 10 minutes. Tony Dungy. That Tony Dungy. All pro dad. All world coach. NBC sports analyst uh, for Football Night in America. And also, he was a part of the Blue Ribbon panel that voted on the NFL's all-time team. The 100 NFL all-time team. I'll be excited to dive into that brain and chat with him. I'm assuming he's feeling the same exact way we are, that Lamar Jackson is just a different animal. And Mike Florio tweeted this out. He said, I'm sick of the comparisons to Michael Vick or something like that. Like The comparison to Michael Vick and Lamar Jackson isn't an accurate one because Lamar Jackson's putting in the work behind the scenes. I think Michael Vick is the only comparable person that you could potentially do to Lamar Jackson. Plus, you add the fact that Lamar is potentially learning from Michael's mistakes, which wasn't studying enough film. Man, what a recipe for success they have over there. Six drives, six touchdowns with Lamar Jackson against another professional football team that trained and practiced against him. With a guy, Aaron Donald, who's one of the best players to ever play football, they just double-teamed him, took care of everything. It's like they have a good concept of how they're supposed to run it as well. So not only is their best athlete making plays, Harbaugh and that staff, Greg Roman and everybody, is putting him in positions to succeed. Like, hey, we'll take care of everything else. You just be Lamar. I think that's a beautiful thing to watch. I think what I took away was the most interesting... Okay, he's just mentioned this guy, Harbaugh, right? And uh, this video I was actually recommended, which is Harbour saying to Lamar on the sideline that he's changed the game. So before we finish Pat's interview, we're going to watch this one. Make the most. Just want to see this, eh? Been really looking forward to seeing this, man. Let's see what he says. <laughs> when I get older, that's right, man. He's only how old is he? Fucking twenty-two. Let me watch that again. That's all I know, coach. What a fucking legend. All right. Thing that Lamar admitted that last year the transition to the NFL ball gave him problems and that he was throwing ducks last year, but now in the offseason he's got used to the NFL ball and now he's fine. And, and you obviously see that every single time he plays him. Yeah, he's like a natural thrower, but you can see the ugly ball. Like whenever a ball breaks up, you lose a lot of things, especially in the NFL where you need zip and you need to drop it into a bucket because the defenders are so much faster than they were in college. So now that he's tightened that up a bit, I mean, things are really happening for him. Top five passer or something like that in yeah. pocket. Also, they said that the, the Ravens have only punted three times in the last couple weeks. RG3 has been in on all three <laughs> of those drives. 
We don't need to bury our. No, 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 well, well, no. Well, well, at this point in the game, he's he's just managing the clock, milking it. You know, I mean, they're trying to punt. You know, they don't yeah. want to go out there and hang another six or fourteen on teams. Just Which RG three could do yeah. and would do. You know, they just they're they're trying to be a little bit more respectful. It's gamesmanship. All right, so. Pat McAfee has his own talk show. In fact, you know what? I'm going to start listening to that. I'm going to start listening to that, get, try and get some information and uh, report back to you guys. Um, but one thing I did want to say is that Pat McAfee is absolutely killing it because what he's done, he's gone and created this, this show, this podcast, that he can do a two or three hour show, maybe one hour, two hours, I don't know how long it is. Then he can go and split this show up into different clips, talking about different uh, you know, players, different topics, and create even more content for his YouTube channel. And another guy who's doing that in the MMA field is Chael Sonnen, the bad guy. So he'll do a full entire show, a podcast, and then he'll, he'll cut it up into clips and put it on his channel. So, and both of these guys are actually um, going up in subscribers by about the same amount. I think uh, Pat's up to, yeah, 4.30. And uh, Chael Sonnen, let's just have a look how many he's got. He's the man, he really is. 431, there you go, two behind. So, uh, you know, both these guys are actually killing the podcast uh, slash YouTube game. And um, I think that moving forward, I have to do the same. We'll get there, guys. Anyways, if you have enjoyed this video, please let me know down in the comment section below. If you've really enjoyed it, hit the like button. And if you've really hated it, then hit the dislike button. The choice is yours and yours alone. That was a... Um, yeah, I, I, sorry, sorry guys, sorry about that. That was actually a, a reference from uh, one of my old favorite programs. Uh, Legends of the Hidden Temple. And with that being said, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.